What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We just sold out 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition. Eight box case break. Pick is number 11. And here we go, guys. I mean, I don't know if everybody does it, Jason. Traveling is one thing that's always been around, and it does suck that they don't call it more, but, you know, the injury, fake injury part, I mean, I think it's mainly a handful of players that obviously kind of do it more often than not. And uh, it's kind of adapted a little bit to the whole soccer thing where you kind of have to make your case for a call, you know? But there is ways to review it now, which helps, you know, right? If you want to review a, a, a foul. I just feel like they need to tweak it just a little bit more where, like, if you successfully win, then you should be able to have another one and continue on until, of course, like, you don't. Of course, man. But, I mean, every sport has... Similar problems, Jason. I mean, hockey players are one of the toughest players in the league, and you'd be seeing some people fake like they got hit in the face with a high stick or, you know, getting shoved and acting out. It happens in all leagues, man. Really? That's awesome, man. Stars did really well yesterday. Of 
course, Jason. I mean, I think that goes with any sport. Every sport has changed when it comes to physicality. But at the same time, I mean... I think that's just like the macho guys in us. Where we want that to stick around and be like that. I mean... Yeah, I guess it's entertaining, right? I mean... But at the same time, like... Bro, you're fouling. Like, all the time. How is that, like... How is that good for the game of basketball? You know? Guy getting punched in the face. Like, that's just... That's just the guy in us. But yes, should they let them be a little bit more physical at times? Yeah, for sure. But, again, that's... That, that's been with everything. Every sport has changed in physicality. And obviously, again, back in the day, head injuries weren't taken seriously. You know? Now, it's linked to so many, so many, obviously, you know, brain injuries and CTE and this and that. It's just like, you, the athletes are making more money for the owners than people will like ever really know and and uh, you know so I think it's fair to have a little bit of protection for some athletes especially in the long run they're getting paid handsomely especially if you are really good but again uh, they're putting their bodies on the liner at risk playing the sport you know but again I mean Definitely, it's cha it's changed everywhere. But yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. The old defense was your close time one. Who's exactly, dude? Like, how is that? How is that good? <laughs> like, at that point, then yeah, like let's just close line. Fuck, let's just close line Jokic until he just doesn't want to drive to the paint anymore because, you know, he's tired of just getting his ass beat. It's like I guess if you want to watch basketball like that, okay. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, look at it. I, I don't, I don't view it as maybe as you, Jason. But I do agree with you on some points. But it's like they. I think everybody's obviously wanting to make it more entertaining, make it more fun, more safety. But it's like I think you can't have it all. Try your best, of course, to make it as fair as possible. But I don't, I don't blame the refs, though, because in real time, like, sometimes this guy does look like he got hit. Or, you know, this guy, you know, should have been fouled or had a penalty or vice versa. But we, of course, on TV now, and you're right, bringing up maybe, like, high definition and, like, just TV. You know, we can see that it wasn't because they have slow motion. You know, we can zoom in on plays, but can't fault like the refs or anything like that <clears throat> for seeing or thinking that it wasn't a catch or you know he did get hit illegally and you know this and that like the one thing that brings me the one thing that's crazy to me is like obviously I was born in the 90s I didn't really get to see a lot of the older older games but you know when Kareem got like sucker punched in the stomach you know and then he just came back and just clotheslined that dude, like, right in the face. Like, that was wild. Yes, I, I, I actually agree to that, James. I think it just changes the narrative so much. It creates excuses for for sports fans and just anybody in general. Well, if, if uh, well, yeah, like, you know, that definitely wasn't a catch. Looking at the replay and this and that, you know. Where it's like, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're all humans, right? We're going to have errors. But in real time, it may look like a catch or it may look like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, it's, I'd rather, I'd rather take it out and just be like old school, you know? But see, my thing is that, do you think they, you, you think, would a ref be able to call, throw a game then? Without having the backup of instant replay. Like if you think about it. like Let's say like 
you get rid of instant replays, you get rid of challenges. I mean, who's to say that a ref wouldn't just call it this way or call it incomplete because, you know, influence somewhere else? Like, you know, I think that's, I think that's one thing that I would think of it would suck. Because you'd have to just go by what the replay, or what the ref said or what the official said. We have Nerwellen. See Daniel. Speaking of replays, now I got a personal question. What's up? How personal? Jason Shario. On the new rules? Yes, Jason. I think so. I believe so. With the new rules we have today, it would be a catch. But go judging by the old rules now. And that's the thing that sucks, right? Some teams and some players got screwed so bad because of older rules. Just like... Humans got, or like, well not, well, not just humans, but you know what I mean, like, when something was made illegal, now made legal, people got screwed, you know? But yeah, in, in today's world, I, I think it was a catch. Yeah, but see now, like, with the new rules, if you look at it closely now, you would probably call that a catch. Because the ground cannot cause a fumble, right? You know? I'd have to replay it again just to double check that I'm not, like, just speaking out of my butt. But I, if I remember correctly, the replay of it, in old rules, it was not a catch. But in this rule, it, it definitely is. Alex Ramirez. We're gonna pull fire in this case or what? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, that's what I'm saying, Jason. It, it's frustrating now as a fan because, again, it would probably count now, but at the time, it, it just didn't. And yeah, I mean, just honestly, bad luck, really. Really, Grizzlebees? Well, I'm pretty sure Peter is excited for that. I mean, this is a jumbo case, though. Does that make a difference? Pedro Martinez and Trey Sweeney to 399. Stand by them, Peter. <laughs> 
Rafael Devers at 75 yellow. Oh, Phoenix has been leading this game for the most part of the game, right? Denver is climbing back and now only down by two. With Jokic at the line. Shario again. I mean that that much snap was definitely on Romo for sure. But I mean you gotta give that guy credit. I mean not credit, but I guess you can kind of give him a little bit of slack because obviously that was that was like his rookie year, wasn't it? In the sense that like when he took over in two thousand six. My thing was that first well, why was he still why was he still the placeholder being the starting quarterback? You would have thought they would have brought in somebody else, right? Yeah, that was just a classic, just little fumble on the uh, uh, from the placeholder. Cam Collar. I like Tony Romo. I'm a big Eagles fan. You know me. I, I'm sure James, you probably hate the Eagles as well. It's no, no, no secret. No, no shame in that. It's just a big rivalry. But I, I did love. To, I did like to watch Tony Romo play football, man. I thought he was great. I just did feel like whether it was unluck or which it was just unlucky or just just couldn't rise to the occasion in certain big games, but it just sucked that he didn't do more, didn't get farther, you know. Now, as an Eagles fan, I'm hap I'm happy for that, <laughs> you know, but it's just like. There was a couple years there, obviously, even when Terrell Owens was on the team, like, the best team in the NFC, get bounced by the Giants, you know? I mean, I partly... Ooh, that's nice out of 75. Jay Savina. I partly think Jerry Jones is a problem with his son. I feel like they have too much control. I don't know. I don't... I've never really liked the whole owner also being, like, the GM. Or, like, you know, Steve... I'm assuming his son Steven is the GM now. But, you know, like, me and, like, family... Like, go bring in some... Like, you have enough money. I hope you're not doing it for money. But you have enough money to go bring in someone that can probably build a better roster than you. And, like, don't be selfish about it, saying, like, I, I, I can do it, you know? I've never liked that about them. I feel like they're just too hands-on. And, uh, you know, it's it definitely hurt them a lot, but... Whatever. It's good for me, I guess. Oh, so you guys have someone as a GM, but he doesn't have the title GM? <laughs> That's so fucked up. Austin Charles. I mean, it, it just... Honestly, it, I think it comes down to the ownership, too. Like, I think when teams are successful is when, obviously, ownership kind of just does their part, supportive of the person running their team, right? And... Obviously, I think when you get when you have an owner that's willing to take risk and pay out big contracts or you know, you know, just spend money, it really does help your club out a lot. You know, like the way I think of it, like for the Eagles, so that's the one I can speak for the most. Like Howie Roseman, I think is a smart GM. He knows how to build rosters. He's done in the past. Not to say he hasn't made mistakes, you know, but I think the supportiveness of your owner does help you out a lot. 
Austin Charles to two ninety nine again. I think you had a blue of this guy earlier, right? Yeah. Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> that's that's how I feel like would happen. But then again, I don't know. Jerry's son would be the guy taking over, right? Would Steven be the next guy up? Like, is it going to get passed down to him? Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's a good thing for you guys, then. That he actually listens, hears more out. Yeah, because, like, what if... What if you don't agree with Jerry, and, and you're telling him to his face, or, you know, getting to a conversation with him? I mean, are you really going to win the argument? Because, obviously, the way Jerry's portrayed, it's like... If he doesn't agree, it's not going to happen, right? He's, it's whatever Jerry thinks is right. Which rightfully so, I guess. It's his team. He can do what he wants. That's what that, that's the part I like to say where it's like it's it's more like you just be a good owner, dish out some money. Especially the Cowboys have money. You know, and just let the person running your team run it. Just be supportive. Well, good. I'm glad he's learning from his dad. I mean, I don't know. I feel like they get stuck on the past too much. I mean, yeah, they did win Super Bowls, especially when he took over. Why? They won, like, what, three in the 90s? I mean, but if they're trying to emulate the same formula and try to do it almost a similar, I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why it, it hasn't worked. It's like it's a totally different league now. I mean... Not to bash, but like, you know, I think Jerry Jones came out before Hertz's contract and they were talking about Dak's contract, how like it's hard to build a roster when you have to pay out a quarterback and la la la, this and that. And it's like, I mean, it. Tyler Roseman did a great job. I mean, I, I was looking at the contracts for Jalen Hurts. Essentially, he's not even like top 15 paid quarterback against the salary for the next three years. You know? And his contract opens up even more money. So it's like... Why is it that you can't do the same? Why is it that your people aren't capable of doing the same thing, you know? Restructuring contracts or, or you know, finding ways, loopholes and stuff like that. Because the salary cap is imaginary. It's not even real. Really, honestly. I mean, there's ways to get around salary cap. So it's like... The Cowboys should be capable of not having to worry about money. Mikey Romero. And yeah, they're going to have to pay him again, right? I mean, I'd assume they would. I don't think they'd move on from Dak yet. Unless he had a horrible season, but... I They... they uh, I, I, They're going to have to pay him again, and... <laughs> And you don't think Dak thinks that he deserves more than Jalen Hurts? I mean, yeah, Jalen Hurts obviously did go to Super Bowl, had an amazing season. But really, honestly, first year didn't play much, barely at the end of the season. Second year was a little shaky, but kind of showed upside. Third year, finally, had a great roster, great decision-making, just in general had a great season. But obviously, if you see someone like Dak, although he hasn't been successful throughout the playoffs, or let's just say winning, well, he wins games against the Eagles all the time. He wins games in the division all the time, and... But obviously playoffs is one thing that's kind of his bad resume part. Threw a lot of interceptions this last year, but I mean who's to say that he's not gonna want more than what these guys are getting now? So that's why I thought it was crucial for the Eagles to give Jalen Hurts that contract. Ooh, this is nice. Don't like the autograph, but that's really nice. Valdez for the Cubs to fifty. They they signed him pretty fast. They dished out the money, structured it perfectly that fits them, and then now 
Lamar Jackson's making more than Hurts, and then Herbert's going to make more than both of those guys, probably. I mean, probably. Burrow's going to make more than those guys. And then, yeah, uh, Dak Prescott's probably going to make more than those guys. Leandro. Well, if you guys are going to get a chance to go to a Super Bowl or win a Super Bowl, I mean, this season and for the next few years is probably the best timing because obviously when it comes to talented quarterbacks, there's talented rosters in the NFC, obviously. But talented quarterbacks on our league, is there's really not as many as the AFC. The AFC is just extremely, extremely loaded now. So getting to the championship game or Super Bowl will be a little easier in, in that sense, but... Not to say it's just easy to beat anybody. I just think, man, I don't know. I just feel like Dak sometimes tries to do too much in those big games. And maybe sometimes doesn't get supportive help throughout the team in those big games. But I just think he tries to do a little too much and tends to make mistakes when he shouldn't. At this, at this point in his career, he shouldn't be making any mistakes like that. Like, you know, interceptions, this and that. Like, reads... At this point. I mean, I, he's been in the league long enough, you know? It's so amazing how, like, some games, like, were, have come down to just the turnovers or, you know, shit like that. And obviously, it's not just all on him either. But I, I think you guys could have beat the 49ers. Easily. Just the offense couldn't do much against the 49ers, that's all. Defense did their part. Yeah, the vision will be pretty nice. I mean, obviously we had three teams in the playoffs last year, which could be the same thing again. But yeah, it'll be a two-headed race again between us, Cowboys and Eagles again. Definitely have the best rosters in our division for sure, by far. Colin Pelos. And Justin Henry Malloy. Yeah, I'm excited for football season. Obviously, we're still a little ways to go, but now that the draft's up, you know, and people are starting to go to, like, little mini camp OTAs, and it's getting a little exciting, you know? For sure. If I was a Cowboys fan, I'd, <laughs> I'd be so mad at the Cowboys in general. You guys would cause me so much like pain. Not only because you guys haven't won, not even been to a championship game in the last like almost 30 years, but just, yeah, a lot of wasted seasons. Should have went farther. Could have been better. I don't know. Did somebody place a curse on you guys? Did Jerry Jones just do something horrible? After the Super Bowls that uh, obviously just placed a curse on you guys until he's gone. I like to think that sometimes. <laughs> Tavera. To Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Sold the soul of the devil to win those chips, and it's like you're gonna endure pain for the rest of your life. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's pretty wild, honestly.
But it's funny. I mean, not to say that they're not suffering, but the one that suffers the most is the fans, right? I mean, we just get so emotionally attached to these teams that... It's like, sports makes me so happy, but can also make me so sad at times. I've, I've gotten better as I got an older, though, honestly. When I was younger, especially a teenager, high school, like, I was... Sometimes, honestly, man, it wrecked me, bro, like, emotionally. If my team's lost or just got blown out and, you know. For the most part, up until, like, the Kings, all the sport teams that I liked I've had either never won a championship or haven't won, like, in a long, long time, you know. Right, so here growing up in L.A., Dodgers. Hadn't won since, like, the 80s. <laughs> One of the main reasons why I don't really watch baseball throughout the season, not only because it's a long season, but obviously for so many years before they finally lead their World Series in 2020, like, how many years from the 2000s to, like, 2020s did they have, like, or 2010s, they had great seasons but lost, you know? So that was one of them. Kings... Went to one Stanley Cup Finals. I was a baby when it happened, but but since then had horrible seasons in the 2000s when I really really loved them, like you know, big teams, but just just you know never made the playoffs anything like that. Till 2012, it changed everything. Eagles, same thing. Obviously, I became an Eagles fan here in LA just because there was no football at the time. My brother-in-law uh, at the time loved Philly with Randall Cunningham, so I kind of watched football with him. And fell in love seeing McNabb. So I became a fan, but, you know. Going to four straight NFC Championship games, losing three of them. Finally getting over the hump. Going to the Super Bowl and then losing to the Patriots in 04, 05. That was, that was, that was tough. <laughs> that was super tough for me. But redemption, of course. Like... 12 years later. Jackson Holiday. Oregon. I love Oregon football. They haven't won anything, but they've been to a couple national championships that I've seen in my lifetime. Could have beat Cam, Cam Newton and Auburn. That was probably their best chance, honestly. They flat out blew against Ohio State, but same thing there. But yeah. The football and the hockey ones really hit me hard, but I got to see hockey, got to see football now, so now you just want more. Like this last this last Super Bowl, yeah, I was I was a little down, I was a little sad, but to me this Super Bowl this this past Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes and the Eagles, like or Chiefs and Eagles, it was just so entertaining to me that like I just thought what a freaking amazing game this was. And like it didn't hit me as hard as I thought it would. You know, bro, that dude was down. That guy was down in Auburn. What was his name? The running back. He was like number five, I think. That dude was so down. Ugh. <laughs> All right, Jason. I appreciate it, man. I have short hair, so I don't think I would be able to. Maybe if I didn't come at her a couple days ago. But thank you, man. But yeah, Charles, imagine being born and raised in Phoenix, and at some point you just turn on the TV. Snakes, one ring, and then nada. Yeah, being a Suns fan, obviously, or Phoenix fan is kind of tough. But at least the at least the Snakes won one. Suns obviously been to a couple now, but lost. Cardinals one to one. That was that was tough, man. I, I I was really pulling for the Cardinals against the Steelers. Although that year you guys broke my heart. My brother was gonna buy me a Deshaun Jackson jersey if the Eagles made the Super Bowl that year. And Eagles are down like twenty four to three. An NFC Championship game against the Cardinals, and they came all the way back, and Deshaun Jackson caught a bomb from McNabb to take the lead at twenty five twenty four. I was jumping up and down in my brother's room just like, oh my god, they're going to go to the Super Bowl. Like, they're coming back. It's just great. I'm going to get a jersey. It was like Deshaun Jackson's rookie year. And then Larry Fitzgerald continued to just dominate and kill time, and it was over. I was like, 
God damn it. That year would have been wild because if the Eagles would have won that NFC Championship game, it would have been uh, Eagles and Steelers in the Super Bowl. That would have been sick. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun. Fitz was amazing that game, man. I just, I don't even know why the Eagles did not triple cover that dude at that point. Still single man, but <laughs> just one on one. But yeah, I guess McNabb is, I guess McNabb has been living in Arizona for a while now. He's been living there since he's been playing football in the NFL. I, I think he's like an Arizona resident, or has been for a while. So I remember when he was an Eagle, he would always go back and train in, in Arizona in the offseason. I don't know, I don't know, James. This is so dumb, dude. Like, I was gonna actually talk to my cousin over here. That dude's a big four nine ish fan. What's up? I just think it's so funny that he's doing that even now. Which I get it, right? The media's been putting a lot of emphasis on the Eagles, Howie Roseman, this and that. But look, man, you went into the game with a healthy Purdy, right? He wasn't injured, right? To my knowledge, he was fine. What happens? He gets injured. Now you have your backup. That dude gets murdered, right? Because you guys couldn't block for him correctly. And then, yeah, how is that our fault? Or how is that, how is that like, not fair in the sense, right? I mean, it's not our fault that you guys, quarter, you guys weren't blocking for your quarterbacks. And then, it's so funny, he's talking all this right now, right? But let's go look at some of the receipts of his when he tweeted this out. I don't remember when this was, but... Tweeted out this saying, quit crying, enjoy the game, take what come with it. <laughs> I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I, 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 feel, I feel for them with the whole Trey Lance getting injured and then Garoppolo getting injured. But, I mean, to my knowledge, Purdy was the lord and savior over there. And he was the next Tom Brady. So, I guess they just believe that if he stayed healthy... He was going to win them the game. But my thing is that you guys didn't block for him right away from the beginning of the game. And got hit. And you don't want your quarterback to get hit, especially with our defensive line. Gets out of the game. And then your backup also gets destroyed and gets a concussion because, again, you couldn't block for him correctly. I don't know why they put a backup tight end to block Hassan Reddick. That I think that's how Purdy got injured, I think. I think Hassan Reddick... Was getting one on one with a with a backup tight end. But yeah, I just think it's so funny that, that he's been talking all this smack. And it wasn't just him, those other 49ers too right after the Super Bowl too. Or during the Super Bowl. But I mean that's I'm not even worried. I'm not even I don't even care about that anymore. They ended up losing, and that was it. Well, you're right, though, James. I, I, I think you guys should have beat the 49ers that week anyways, and it should have been us against you guys, but... You know. It just didn't happen. Yeah, well, yeah, he's 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 a he's always been a pretty big dude, Charles. But I mean, probably now I don't know if he's as fit as he used to be, so he's probably like even bigger now. But uh, yeah, his his niece and nephew are athletes, so I believe his niece also plays hockey. But I don't know if you know who Darnell Nurse is. He plays with Edmonton Oilers. He's a defenseman. That's Don McNabb's sister's son, which is his nephew. And I believe Darnell Nurse's sister also plays hockey. And then I want to say, too, McNabb's daughter plays basketball in college now, too. I don't know if she went to Syracuse where he did, but I, I want to say that his daughter also plays basketball. So, 
you know, kind of pretty athletic family if you think about it. But, but yeah, Darnell Nurse, that is uh, McNabb's nephew. Which I think his wife must have got married to like a Canadian or something, because I think he was born in Canada. Oh, you stopped by the shop today, Charles? <sighs> yeah, I mean, Nav played basketball too, that's correct, yeah. I mean, Nav was a great athlete. I mean... I, I don't think he gets a lot of respect in the NFL that he deserves. He definitely was a great quarterback. And honestly, he has Hall of Fame stats. I I got to see most of his career, honestly. I mean, obviously, after the Eagles, it kind of fell down a little bit. Kind of bouncing around from, like, Washington to, to the Minnesota Vikings. But, but his tenure with the Eagles, man, I mean, he has Hall of Fame stats. I know Troy Aikman won a couple Super Bowls, but he has better stats than Troy Aikman, and he's in the, in the Hall of Fame. So, I mean, my, my, my thing is that I guess if McNabb would have won a Super Bowl, he'd be a Hall of Famer. But I think eventually he would get in. I mean, his, his touchdown to interceptions ratio is a very, very big, uh, very, very good in NFL history, if I remember correctly. He was a big man that was super athletic. Alrighty guys, so I am getting some orders, which is great. Looks like a lot of Hip Parade products are getting spots sold, like fillers and whatnot. But it looks like we're still a little ways to go though. Six, two fillers, 12, two fillers. Six, two fillers. Seven still. 19. Well, that one's kind of moving, actually. Maybe we can get the revolution done tonight, guys. I mean, that's only a $12 filler, guys. I feel like we should get that done. That's probably the cheapest break you're ever going to see here on Jaspi's. 12 bucks. I feel like if we're not going to get anything else done, should be able to get that filler done. And break open some revolution. Alright, here we go, guys. The Paula for the Dodgers, little color match. Marin Gonzalez.
Spencer Jones. And another Valdez, this time to four ninety nine. Jace John Paper. Jonathan Mejia. To one fifty. And we got a Max Wagner to seventy five. Those are having a break. Ballesteros. Who hit him in the nuts? Terrace. And Ronnie Simon, a little speckled at 299.
George Reese. Bobby Wood Jr. DePaula. All right, you guys, two more boxes left, and then we're donezo with this Bowman. Brandon Walter for the uh, Red Sox going to James. Kenny Gomez. Denver's getting great looks. They're just not draining them tonight. Zach Neto. Ooh, that's the cool. Out of Atomic to 100. Nice one there for the Angels. Kind of David. Should have 
one more autograph, I think. Unless we already hit three, but I think we only hit two. And Sosa. And actually, there it is right there. Willier Abreu, 1099. Little green grass auto. Houston's going to Ryan. Prime de Leon. Alex Ramirez to four ninety nine. Xander Rodriguez to 150. Nice little blue there for Kansas City. That's going to Matthew. Anthony Gutierrez. Last stack here, we should have one more auto. Oswaldo Cabrera. Chase Jung to two ninety nine. Remember Jordan Lawler to 125. And Roderick Arias to 150. Paper blue. Alrighty, guys. Alrighty, folks, we got a lot of colors. I'll do a quick little autograph recap for you guys. But no Drew Jones. 
Some nice names, though. Colors, too. So Alex Ramirez for the Mets to 499. Lisandro Rodriguez to 150 for the um, Royals. Stewart for the Angels. Brandon Walter for the Red Sox. Zach Neto, Atomic to 100 for the Angels. Willie Abreu, Green Grass to 99 for the Houston Astros. DePaula for the Dodgers, Blue. Uh, Valdez for the Cubs, Refractor to 499. Ballesteros base, Palouse base. Ronnie Simon, Speckle to 299. George Reese, Angels base. Anthony Roman. We got a Almonte Gold. That's not autograph though. Another Palouse. Tavera, 250 for the Baltimore Orioles. Amarian, Boyd, Refractor. Valdez, Gold for the Cubs. Bastidas for the Detroit Tigers. Austin Charles Speckle for the Kansas City Royals. Avina Yellow for the Brewers. Cam Collar, Color. Xavier Isaac Invicta uh, to 50 for the Tampa Bay Rays. Another Alex Ramirez. Austin Charles Blue for Kansas City. And then Norwillian um, Cedinho for the Padres. So appreciate it, folks. That was it. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.